Hi, I'm Ruben Saltzman with Structure Tech Home Inspections, and today I'm going to discuss some of the ins and outs of carbon monoxide testing for furnaces. So this discussion is a long time coming. We've been testing carbon monoxide on furnaces pretty much forever. Back when my dad was teaching me home inspections back in, boy, 97? I remember he was doing carbon monoxide testing and he had gone through a bunch of training to do this. And I've been through countless classes, not countless, maybe about 10 classes. It feels like a lot. Tons of classes from different professionals in the field on how to do carbon monoxide testing. I've been through equipment manufacturers classes. I've been through experts in the field, the HVAC contractors. I've been through classes put on by the gas company, so many different educational resources. And what's the most frustrating about this is that everybody disagrees. Everybody is the expert and their way is right and they are the authority. I have not found any type of authoritative reference or document saying exactly how carbon monoxide testing is supposed to be done, which is why I've never discussed it. I've never blogged about it. I've never done a video on it because the opinions are so varied. And I, I have a tough time figuring out what's exactly right and what's not. But too bad. I'm going to share what we do. And if you don't like it, you can comment on this video and you can say, Ruben, here's why you're an idiot and you're supposed to do it this way. Uh, feel free. So here's what we do. First off, let me set the stage. Carbon monoxide is odorless, tasteless, and you can't see it. It's produced as a result of natural gas combustion. If you have a problem with the furnace burning properly, it may create too much carbon monoxide. Uh, a good level is something close to zero. It's kind of a mythical number. It's probably never going to be exactly zero, but carbon monoxide levels should be low. If a furnace is producing too much carbon monoxide, it's not burning properly. You got the potential to gum up your burner ports and get things clogged up with soot. You've got too much fuel being used. You have unburnt fuel and it's not going to be as efficient as it should be. And finally, you create a potential safety issue because if some of that exhaust gas were to leak into the home under normal circumstances, it's not going to be that big of a deal. But if a furnace is misfiring and it's producing too much carbon monoxide and some of that exhaust gas does leak back into the house, whether it's through a backdrafting furnace or a flue that's not venting properly and some of the exhaust gas is leaking out of it, or you have exhaust gas leaking around the burner ports. There's a lot of different, or a cracked heat exchanger. So many different ways. I'm getting sidetracked. If you have exhaust gas leaking into the house under normal circumstances with a low level of carbon monoxide in the flue, nobody's gonna die. But if your furnace is malfunctioning and it's producing dangerously high levels of carbon monoxide, you have removed one huge layer of safety from your furnace operating inside your house. So it's not safe to have this. Now, one very authoritative number when it comes to carbon monoxide testing on furnaces, this comes, now I'm in Minnesota, this comes from the Minnesota State Fuel Gas Code. It's repeated in the National Fuel Gas Code, and I believe this is also an ANSI standard, and I don't know how many other standards use this number, but the magic number is 400 parts per million. When a furnace is producing over 400 parts per million of carbon monoxide, it's not safe. That is a magic threshold. When it's over that number, the equipment is supposed to be shut down. But the one, the one uh, caveat here is that we're not measuring raw carbon monoxide. If I'm using a very basic carbon monoxide device where it's, it's got a probe and it's meant for furnaces, and it's just measuring how much carbon monoxide is there in the flue gas total, it's not a valid number. What is a valid number is how much carbon monoxide we have air free. That's the important distinction. And it basically means that my combustion analyzer, not a basic carbon monoxide detector, 
but my combustion analyzer is going to calculate how much air, how much free air is in that vent. Because if you have a furnace that's pulling in a ton of household air and it's mixing it with that exhaust gas, well, that exhaust gas is gonna be severely diluted. It, on Say, for example, a power vent water heater, those things always pull in a ton of household air and the CO level, the raw CO level, is always gonna be very low when you test that vent. But if you're using a combustion analyzer that calculates the air-free carbon monoxide reading, it'll pull out all that dilution and it'll tell you really how the furnace is burning or water heater or whatever the appliance is. And that's the number we're after. And that's what the fuel gas codes reference as 400 parts per million, they say 400 PPM air-free. So 400 parts per million, black and white, that is an important number that is referenced in the codes. Anytime it's above that, that means we're making a phone call to the homeowner. We're saying, hey, this equipment is out of whack. It's not safe to operate. We suggest you fix it today. It's a little bit more urgent if it's in the winter time. Now, if it's a summer day and your furnace is not operating properly, we'll probably leave a note. Maybe we'll make a phone call too. Maybe we'll even shut the equipment off as long as people aren't relying on their air conditioner to run at the same time. But that that's important. Now, lower numbers start to get into a gray area. I've heard heating contractors say they don't like seeing things over 200. I've heard 100. I've heard people stick with the 400 number. So I don't know what the magic number there is. However, the gas company here has produced a chart that I got my hands on. It's kind of a cheat sheet for their own technicians saying what is allowable and what is not and at what level they will red tag or yellow tag equipment. And the magic number they use is 100 parts per million, air free. They say if it's over 100 parts per million, it's not acceptable. If they, I think their threshold was 105 parts per million on a furnace they will yellow tag it. I don't know exactly what the yellow tag means. It means uh, you, you probably shouldn't keep using the equipment in this condition. You should probably have it serviced, but it's not so severe that we're act actually gonna shut down the equipment. And then as it gets higher, eventually they'll red tag it. And that is the same standard that we use for my home inspection company. When something is over 400 parts per million, we just say, look, you gotta shut it down, it's not safe. When it's over 100 parts per million, we say, hey, this isn't burning properly. You ought to have it serviced. And then we list some of the potential problems you can have with too much carbon monoxide in the flu. Not saying that you're gonna die today, you know, no need to blow this out of proportion. It's just that the equipment is not operating properly. It could stand improvement, so have it serviced. Having equipment serviced regularly is something you should do anyway. So it's a, it's a good excuse for us to recommend that service. And then the last thing for me to talk about is where we test for carbon monoxide. There's basically three different styles of furnace and three different test methods for these different furnaces. One type of furnace is the traditional draft hood heat exchanger. Well, it, it's a traditional draft hood on a furnace where you have several different cells of the heat exchanger and each one of those takes the exhaust gases together and all the exhaust gases converge at the top and they rise up through a flue. And for those, we need to take our probe and we stick it inside each one of those individual cells and we do a separate test on each one of them to make sure that each cell is burning properly. And we're testing this before the draft hood. That's the best place to test. It gives us the most accurate test. So that's one type of test. Those are kind of few and far between. There are not a lot of those furnaces out there. What replaced that style of furnace is one that has a draft fan. And it means that there is no traditional draft hood. You actually just have a motorized fan right at the top of the furnace and it's sucking all of that combustion air out of each one of those heat exchanger cells. It puts it all together in a flue, and the best place to test is about six inches above that fan. And assuming we have a single wall pipe or a class C vent, there's almost always a quarter inch hole in that vent 
where a furnace installer or a furnace technician has already drilled a little hole and they've done a carbon monoxide test on that furnace. If the hole is not there, we will drill a hole and then we will cover that with UL listed foil tape. And I'll tell you, there is a difference in metal tape. The super cheap metal tape that costs like five bucks a roll at the store, once that stuff gets really hot, it will fall off the vent. It might take a few months, but it doesn't stick around long time. See what I did? Stick around. And then there's the other UL listed tape and that stuff stays on really well. So, and that stuff is like, 10 bucks a roll. It's, it's more expensive, but it's the only stuff we use. And for how much we use week to week, one roll is gonna last a home inspector about 10 years. No, it'll, it'll last me until I lose the roll. That's about it. So we use the more expensive tape, we cover up the hole. This is perfectly fine. Now, if it's a B vent, it means it's a double wall vent, no holes should be drilled in those. We do not drill holes in those because there is no way to repair the inner wall of that. So that's testing on a traditional fan assist furnace. And then for the third type, it's gonna be the high efficiency furnace or the category four appliance. You can watch my video on different furnace categories some other time if uh, you're not sure what a cat four furnace is, but the, the short and sweet version of it is you probably have PVC vents taking fresh air into the furnace and taking exhaust gas back out of the furnace. And for those, we test at the exhaust terminal. And it's either gonna be on a sidewall, which is easy to get at, or on a roof, which is also easy to get at, assuming the roof doesn't have a super steep pitch, and assuming it's summer, fall, or spring. Now, if it's winter in Minnesota, sometimes those can be tough to get at. You know, super slippery, snow-covered roof. We're probably not going to walk that just to get up there and test the CO. We may not be able to test the CO on those, but a lot of other times there's actually going to be a test port right at the furnace. Sometimes furnace installers will install a separate test port. They'll put a little section of PVC with a removable plug. If that's there, we'll, we're happy to remove the plug, test the CO, and put it back together. Sometimes you have installers who have drilled a hole in the PVC pipe. Our policy is to not drill that hole, but if it's already there, we will reuse it. And then sometimes furnaces have, I, I don't know, I, I've called them built-in test ports. I've had heating contractors correct me and say, that's not a built-in test port, that's not what it's there for. Okay, fine, whatever call it whatever you want, but it's a hole in the exhaust. And when we stick our probe in, we get the exact same CO readings that we do if we test at the exterior. So if we have one of these ports right next to the furnace, we're happy to use one of those to take our reading as well. So that, uh, that covers just about everything I can think of to talk about when it comes to CO testing on furnaces. I hope I got all my facts straight. And if I didn't, and you can prove it, give me an authoritative reference, maybe we'll change our method of testing in the future. Thank you so much for watching. Take care.